Uh, just ignore the uh, tinfoil hat. But today I thought we'd talk a bit about cell phone technology because you have been saying that our cell phones are all tracked. And in some ways, hang on, they're on to me now. You're right. So seriously, let's talk a bit about the history of cell phones and the history of them actually being a trackable device. This device is a prototype, a prototype whose trials are being carried out strictly governed by Home Office regulations. At the moment in the UK, approved mobile phones are really little more than transmitter receivers which put the caller in touch with a post office operator who dials up the number you want and then connects your remote radio extension with the rest of the telephone network. So, so I'm old enough to remember when the early cell phones, that's my size of the cell phones, were actually analog and extremely high powered. They had to transmit an analog FM signal, maybe, you know, a couple of miles to a tower. And in fact, they were quite dangerous. The sheep are here. I'm sorry about this. Oh, I'm sorry for this interruption in service, but the sheep want to say something, especially Henry the ram, who's at the door and he has a statement. Hey, Henry, you want to come in? Come and say hi to everybody. Hi! Do you have a cell phone? Oh, you don't? Hi, guys. Thanks for being in the film. Have fun. After going digital, the big next step was putting GPS chips in phones. And, you know, that was sold as good for location services, but it just enhanced finding you in an emergency or if government actually wanted to track you down. So how does that work? Easton's pioneering achievements in spacecraft tracking, navigation, and time technology led to the development of the Navstar Global Positioning System, now commonly referred to as simply GPS. The name we used was Timation for time navigation. Timation was how it works and GPS is what it does. Today, GPS is an array of Earth orbiting satellites providing precise navigation data for both military and civilian applications. It's actually a chip in your phone and you know how GPS works, but the signal is actually very weak. Great GPS story is Newark Airport, planes use GPS for lining up on the runway and landing. And they found that every single work day at lunchtime over the airport, they lost the entire GPS signal. So planes had to use alternative landing methods for about an hour every day. And they took it really seriously. The FAA began to investigate and eventually they found the answer. A truck driver who was delivering food to a restaurant at the airport every lunchtime hated that his boss had a GPS tracker on his truck that was monitoring his driving around New York City. So he bought a cheap GPS blocker on eBay and had it on. And when he arrived at the airport, it blocked the entire airport for an hour while he was working and eating his lunch. So blocking a GPS signal is in fact very easy. And in fact, a tinfoil hat would work. <laughs> And you've probably been told that it's possible on your phone to switch off this location services. Well, let me talk to you about that. Location services are a sold app thing that phone companies sell to developers, you know, to sell you pizza when you're driving down the road. But it doesn't, if you turn off location services, it doesn't turn off the GPS chip for the security services. And you all know that because if you dial 911, it still works and it still knows your location. You cannot totally disable the GPS chip in your phone apart from taking the battery out. Because even when it's off, 
it's pinging to say that it's in standby and it actually is giving a location to security or whoever else needs to find you. <laughs> and there's more. A question that people do ask me all the time is, is it a good idea to um, keep your phone in the microwave oven because the microwave oven is a Faraday cage that will block the phone signal. So my wonderful wife Dorothy and I did an experiment today and here's the result. Okay, so that was all a bit of fun. What I really wanted to say was to clarify my film that I did on the COVID-19 tracking software. It's not software designed to track you. It's tracking the virus. It doesn't care where you are or where you've been. It's just looking for proximity to other users who will self-announce that they have the virus. And I think it's a good thing. But people said, and they're absolutely correct, it could be abused. Is it, as I said, a slippery slope to further surveillance? Well, you know, these things, when they are accepted, become part of our daily life, like the GPS chip in our phone, or even using cells. You don't often totally realize what liberties you're giving up when you buy into a new technology that is sold to you not with full disclosure. And there's two things about the feds or security services in your country that you don't know about that gives them full unrestricted access to a cell phone. A cell phone really is a gateway to finding you. First of all, there really doesn't need to be any court order by say the police or who else to actually download, it's called a tower dump. So if they can say, look, we'd like to know who's been using this cell, which numbers have been phoning, not what the conversation is, just times and phone numbers, that information just is freely available from the phone companies and they will just give it without a court order to the police. But then there's a more sophisticated thing the police have recently introduced. And this is a technology that goes by the name of Stinger. And how that works is the security services set up a temporary clandestine cell tower in a mobile van. And then anybody in the range of that van, when they use their phone, goes through the van and then completes the call. But all the calls, all the voice, all the data is recorded during the Stinger operation. And that does need a court order. But there are hundreds of these court orders and the technology now for the Stinger is now the size of a briefcase. You can literally have it in the back of a squad car and set these up. And so if they suspect that there's some illegal operation going on, they just put up the Stinger network and then every call in that vicinity that goes through their antenna is recorded. Actually, the voice is recorded. So this does happen. And then there's a whole world of what I call metadata. And this is not the actual voice traffic. That's too big. It's too messy. But just the statistics, because you can learn so much about societies and people's movements and individuals from this data that you can get that again is freely given out. You can find information like when people make phone calls, the time and length and duration of the calls. And this is the kind of data that governments want to get, statistical data, which you are giving away just every time you use your cell phone and it is being recorded. So, do I 
have a cell phone? Absolutely not. I think that cell phones are just an excuse to actually record so much data about an individual. We as individuals seem to be prepared to give up our civil liberties in exchange for technology. And I don't think it's really clearly been explained to us what we're gaining and what we're losing. And I think it's important for us all to know because the truth is out there.